What's going on, YouTube? It's Sessie, a place to be. Chill Train, Mr. A and E. Better you guys know the SmackDown Live review from March 27th, 2020. Can I just say this? SmackDown, it's already hard for me to review SmackDown on Fridays, opposed to when it was on Tuesday. I'm still trying to get it on the swing of things. That's why things always come to you late. And by the time it's time for me to put the, like, get the review, I'm like, I might as well do the raw one to go with it so I can give it a joint package of on, on a Tuesday morning, right? Or Tuesday afternoon. Well, that's one thing, but then now, Spider has just been getting worse and worse, and I'm telling you, these empty arenas do not help at all. So... SmackDown, this is going to be a, par as every SmackDown review is, is a paraphrase thing because I be trying to muscle my way to get through SmackDown. I really do. Bailey and Sasha Banks are in the ring to talk about, I guess, their friendship will never be broken when, when it comes to the championship. Then Naomi comes out and wants the championship and they see others come out with the championship. And then, oh my God, here comes Tamina because Carmella is not in the match and neither is Dana Brooke because Car both of them are sick. So... They get Tamina. How does Tamina keep getting in these spots? At, Tamina got more WrestleMania matches lined up than a lot of these women in there. And she do nothing. She do nothing. And Tamina came out in the most lax clothes I have seen. She came out there in some sweatpants, a tank top, and a hoodie. Not even zipped up, just, just chilling on the shoulders with some sneaks on. I'm like... So she must have came out quarantine to come record this to go back to the house because that's what she looked like. She come out and says, actually speak louder than words. I'm like, oh my God. Here buzz, here buzz Naomi, super kicks uh, Lacey Evans. And then uh, Bailey and Sasha tried to jump Naomi, but then uh, Tamina, you know, tries to go for the attack. I, I didn't care about this segment at all. I did. I really didn't care about. It. I'm not. I, I am less interested in the, in the Fatal Five Way matchup than I would have been a Six Pack Challenge. But then even still, it should have just been Sasha and Bailey for the championship. And they refused to pull the trigger on the friendship that they had. I'm like, you you can drop the shit. They're. I mean, but now they're both heels. So you're like, which one do you turn? I'm like, keep Bailey the heel. Bailey needs to be a heel longer than Sasha do. But once again, heel Sasha is cool as well. So. I'm curious how they're going to record this matchup for, uh, you know, uh, WrestleMania and who is possibly going to win it. And I, I, I mean, I, I'll get into the more that when the predictions come around. But then after that, we we uh, we go into a match with Drew Gulak taking on Shinsuke Nakamura with Sami Zayn at ringside, and then you had uh, Daniel Bryan. And Rick said also, I don't know why. Look, Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan is a great match. However, i seen Sami Zayn and Daniel Bryan interact before. I have not seen Shinsuke and Daniel. That's what the match Shinsuke wanted. That's the reason why he came back to the WWE in the first place. To have a match with Daniel Bryan. And why does is a Shinsuke win the title back from Braun Strowman and go up against Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania? Who knows? But it was, it's him versus Drew Gulak in this matchup. The matchup is fine. Drew Gulak hits Nakamura with a roll up and picks up the win here to pick up a uh, good heat for them going heading into WrestleMania. Oscar takes on Alexa Bliss with Nikki Cross being incredibly annoying at ringside, and I understand. Look, she's trying to be entertaining. She's trying to you know make do for the crowd not being there. I understand that. But sweetheart, I mean, Michael Cole was trying to laugh. She, she, she was so excited she had the headset off. She's like, why are you touching me? And I was just like, and it's like Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. I was like, oh, this is annoying. Uh, Alexa Bliss hits her, her DDT that did not look impactful at all and beats Oscar. And I'm like, okay, well, that's just getting them ready for WrestleMania. Backstage, Otis is ready to uh, jump dogs in for all the things that he's been uh, d saying and showing oh, us about Mandy Rose. This was one of the best storylines on SmackDown. This was one of the best storylines going on SmackDown. And they're ruining it, ruining it. Because there has never been a mention. Like, first of all, if you're not going to mention when it came to the mix-up on the phone, if you're not going to mention that Otis said to Mandy, you gave me a text saying that you're going to be late. 
And Mandy never, and she said, what text? And then all of a sudden, she just moved on from that? Like, she, she just never said, wait a minute. What text is Otis talking about? Because now it just looks like Otis is just jealous that Dolph Ziggler got Mandy. Like, like bro, if that was the case, yo, bro, back off. If she don't want you, she don't want you. But he, he's acting like he's been set up, but they never put the setup in place. You see, see what I'm saying? So it makes no sense. So then Dolph said, if you want me, you want to face me, you can face me at WrestleMania. My boy, one of my favorites, Dolph Ziggler, finally gets a singles match at WrestleMania with nobody there. Why, Lord, why? I, I, I've been, <laughs> I've been with Dolph since day one. Not ish, day one. I was with Dolph back when he was overselling. I was with Dolph back when he was there with Vicky Guerrero. I was with Dolph when he won the world championship. I was with Dolph when he was having match with CM Punk and Edge. I was with Dolph Ziggler. I was. I wasn't winning with Spirit Squad because I I didn't know which one, I, who to be with, but I was with Dolph Ziggler, and you mean, and I've been rooting for this guy, and ever since Cena said no, nah, Vince, they've been putting Dolph Ziggler in the hole. He had a chance to leave. He should have left, came back, reintroduced himself. He did. Dolph been there, and he's been in multi man ladder matches after multi man ladder matches after multi man matches after battle royals. But no, now he gets a good storyline, and he gets a one on one matchup in front of. No one. And the payoff, which should be at WrestleMania, is Mandy Rose finding out that she got set up and that, you know, she should, Otis should win her heart back and then they should probably kiss or something. Can't do that. Six feet distance. It's all fucked up. It's all messed up. So the uh, Dolph is backstage and, she, and then Mandy comes up and says, like, look, why do you keep doing this to Otis? And he says, look, look, I'm sorry. I, I know I want a little... A little much and she says look well the first thing that's going to happen is you, the two of you are not going to fight with me like i'm surprised and i'm like mandy sweetheart click this this should be a bigger storyline than it is it really fell apart and i understand that with the virus that's been happening and it's, it's out of our control it's out of our control but here's the thing they who gave the text messages you know uh, is somebody jealous of somebody? Like right now, the go home show to WrestleMania next week on SmackDown should be her finding out that she got set up. That Dolph and Sonya or Tucker or whoever it is set her up. That should that's who it should be. But she should play Dolph Ziggler at WrestleMania. That should be the payoff if, if it comes full circle. But right now, we're not doing it, and I'm already pissed off about that. Elias is on the balcony of the former center. Uh, sing, sing a song to uh, Corbin, but then Corbin comes out and attacks Elias before their match at WrestleMania. Why is that a thing? And then uh, as Elias is hanging on to the balcony, he gets tossed over. Corbin keeps hitting his hands, and then Elias falls, and it's just the most weirdest. And you, it's not as bad as when the, when the things fell on Roman Reigns' edit, but it's just like he you hear him fall. You look, he's like on the concrete. I'm like. Elias ain't hit that concrete. <laughs> Elias ain't hit that concrete. But okay. Didn't care. Still don't care. The New Day and the Usos go at it again because the Usos said, when it come to WrestleMania, you know they got to, the Usos got to be able to the New Day one more time. So the winners are going to go up against who, uh, Miz and Morrison at WrestleMania. So, uh, with that being said, uh, they have a match. The match is pretty good. Ms. Morris on top of the uh, now table talking crap. Kofi trips one of them up. And then they beat them down because they're upset. And then it's building up to be a triple threat match between those three teams. Good. And I would add something to it. But, you know, obviously that, like, that match is not about to happen. Not about to get into spoilers because I'm going to say that for the podcast. But... This match is definitely not happening. And that was SmackDown in a nutshell. Terrible. It was just terrible. SmackDown gets a thumbs down from me this week. Up, this week, But you can post that in the comments down below. How do you guys feel about SmackDown this week? And uh, make sure you guys subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe for more WWE content on WrestleMania week right here on Nerd Coalition. So once again, this is an NCAA place to be. Joe Trump, Mustang, and Nerd Coalition is out.